You did not come here for crumbs. You came to feast. And this is Kali. Kali, the dark goddess, the dark mother, the fierce divine feminine force that awakens your desire, your life force, your destiny, your devotion, your dharma your divinity. We're going to be practicing today with her and her capacity to help you truly channel through your whole body that within yourself that you know is sacred, that you know is yours. This power that no one can take away from you. Kali comes in and she cuts you off from any phantom power, any ego desires, any ideas about what you have to be or what you need to get or what you have to become, including becoming a spiritual whatever, practitioner, spiritual woman, spiritual entrepreneur, spiritual healer, spiritual whatever. Kali cuts you off from any ideas you have about what you are not. She cuts you off from the lies, from the chains that may not have been yours, but you brought into this world that you have believed are yours to bear and carry. The belief that you are wrong to want what, to want what you want, that you're guilty to truly claim what you desire in your heart. That somehow you should be ashamed of your sexuality, of your sensuality, of your beauty, of your most tender needs to be held, to be seen, to be understood, to belong, to be loved for who you are, for who you are, for who you have never even felt you were allowed to be let alone let others see you in the truth of your being. When we grow up believing that we are not allowed to be who we are, we don't have the courage to even see ourselves. How can we expect the world to see us? How can we expect our beloved to recognize our truth or to understand what we want if we don't know what it is? So Kali, the dark goddess of truth, and devotion and fierce love and sacred boundaries saying no this doesn't serve me no this is not true no this is not mine this is not my story and if it if it if it was my story up until five minutes ago it is not my story and i claim that from now on i create my life as a love story with my own self with the truth of my being, with that within me that is sacred, that knows nothing but truth, that wants nothing but peace in this world, that wants nothing but love within myself and within everyone else, that what you, within you, know you want more than anything, that is that is Kali's deepest desire for you, whether you believe in working with archetypes or not, Indulge me. Let's explore. Let's play. Let's use our capacity to feel and to heal and to transmit, really transmit into this world who we are and what we want and what we believe is true, what we believe is right. Not righteous, not your, again, your mind's ideas of what you need to get or who you need to be or what you need to own what achievements you need to list to other people so that they can respect you and love you and welcome you so that you're safe. No, no, in this moment in the world, Kali and the divine feminine, yes, they are rising. Yes, yes. You know why? Because the only way forward 
is through our hearts, is through your heart, the only way forward in a way that actually feels true to you, in a way that actually feels like it is your way, your way, your way, your heart's way. When I say your, I mean your heart's way. And Kali helps you release what is not you, what is not true, what is not yours. She helps you burn down, really burn down every lie you've told yourself, every lie you've believed other people telling you about who you are. Every idea and story and belief that your body has absorbed because you had no other way. You had no other way. Well, this is the work. The work is to lift the veil, to take off the glasses that don't actually help you see the truth. The glasses that have been tainted with other people's stories and conditioning and traumas and history and all of the things that we are told we have to believe in order to survive in this world. I'm calling you to feast. I am calling you to live, not survive, live. And Kali is that archetype, that dark goddess archetype that will take you into the cauldron, into the womb, into the underworld, the underbelly of your being so that you can see what is true, what is pure. You can feel it. Feel your essence. Feel what's natural to you. Your skin, your truth is your skin, your soul skin. That you keep shedding, yes, because that's why we're here. We're here to grow and shed every layer of what isn't true. Which is why we have so many layers. And yet, every single untruth, every single mask, every single belief system that you have brought into this world, just like me, that you have accumulated just like me, has served you as, as it served me. I remember a moment in my bed in the early morning where I was praying, I was praying to God and I was asking him, it, that, the God that I believe in, which has no gender. That presence that I know I can trust, that truth, that beauty, that love, that grace within me that I know created this world. I asked that. I asked that to kill me, not kill my, my, my being, right? Not kill, not kill my physical body but kill the me that I knew wasn't true. Kill the idea of me that was greedy and obnoxious and entitled and scared and ashamed and constantly trying to pretend to be something she wasn't. Yes, yes, I have lived that and I still live that every day. I still, every single day, see certain masks that I thought I was done with come up because that's why I'm here. I'm here to transmute that day in and day out. Because all of this information, all of these energetics are coming into my being just like into yours. All of the people I connect with, all of the things that I hear and see and consume, right? all of the information, information that goes into my system, it will bring up more and more and more and more and more shadows and masks. Just structures within my being that are telling me that I have to behave a certain way so that I am something successful, rich, skinny, healthy, spiritual, pretty, attractive, abundant. And none of these things actually mean anything to my heart. It's all coming from an idea that came into my being from somewhere else, but it's not natural to me. So when I asked God to kill that part of me that at that moment was giving me so much just anxiety and fear this idea of me i had this idea of me as a successful driven ambitious you know there there, there ain't no time to sleep i'll sleep when i'm die kind of thing you know just this powerhouse 
online entrepreneur, coach, teacher. I was doing good work. I was doing good work. I was good at what I was doing. And I very much felt my heart open and hold and lead a lot of the time. And the structures around it, the way that I was choosing certain things to do in my life, in my day, what I was choosing to consume, what I was choosing to invest my time and energy in, my being, my essence. I was wasting a lot of it on things that I didn't actually care about, that I didn't believe was they were, they were true or they were, they were needed. And I now, right, I can feel, I can feel just the depth of illusion that so many of us are walking around and believing that we know the truth, but we don't. So Kali comes in and she burns down the most insidious things that you think are non-negotiable. Like I, I need to, right, do this so that I, and there is no space for your heart. There is no space for your grief. There is no space for your fear, but the true fear of actually being who you are, actually living the truth, which might look like nothing that what you expected, that might look like it's opposing everyone else's idea of what you should do. Not like a rebellion for the sake of rebellion, not like a meltdown, right? But truly owning who you are and what you want in a world that will never stop telling you what it thinks you should want and who you think you should be <laughs> so that you get it. You no longer know what's true or not. And so one of the reasons why we do this inner work, one of the reasons we work with archetypes and we work with Kali, why I work with her and I bring her in and I want you to really commit to the practice of owning and honoring that in you which is causing you suffering, which is separating you from your heart. It's literally blocking your heart. And it stems from fear. It stems from shame. It stems from just, just complete and total, almost terror that it, it could be possible that you are not crazy, that you are not wrong, that you have nothing to be ashamed of, that what your heart is showing you is actually true, that that vision you have for yourself and how you want to live your life in your heart is possible. There is a part of you and I that is terrified of that because it means that all of the things that we're holding in our heads and all of the to-dos that we have on our lists and all of the even practices that we have to do during the day, most of the things that we do, when they're coming from a blocked heart, when they're coming from a womb that's written with shame and fear, and a grief that you'd never let yourself feel, and anger that you've never expressed, Whatever desires are coming from that place of a blocked heart, of a mind that's disconnected from the truth of you, which is in your body, it's nowhere else to be found. It can only be found inside of you. Which is why in the tantric tradition, we work with the body. Why? Because this is where you get to experience the truth. It is here. It is here. Even when you read something and you feel, oh, this is truth, I can feel it. You're not feeling it on the page, you're feeling it in your body. It's simply that what you read evokes that resonance. It reminds you, wakes you up, right? So the Kundalini, that energy, that energy that is you, that is you, that has been asleep and now it wakes up, it wakes up, it wakes up, it wakes up, it hears, it sees, it feels, it knows, it is time for it to remember what it is. Through you, through your mind, right? Through your capacity to understand, through your capacity to interpret, through your capacity to create, 
So we need the mind and we need your consciousness. Your consciousness is that capacity in you that can actually understand what I'm saying. And even if you don't understand everything I'm saying, it knows that it's receiving the exact message it needs because my message is simple. What you are, the truth of your being lives inside of your heart. And when you get to experience that, nothing else will matter but experiencing more and more and more of that. And that will never separate you. It will never make you feel like you need to be apart from the world and run away from it and hide. There will be moments where you will feel overwhelmed. There will be moments where you feel like you're going crazy. There will be moments where you will need to create an actual sanctum for yourself, a space where you can do the work. But in all of that, you will actually feel more as if you are part of the world, the real world, right? Not the illusion not the illusion of the society that tells you that this doesn't matter. We can talk about it, right? But we won't live it because it will leave you broke and alone and rejected. No. No, the truth is that that which lives inside of your heart will only lead you to what you truly want because it's part of it. Just like a baby wants to suck on its mom's whoops chest, right? Her, 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 her milk. It knows it came from her womb. It always wants to return there in a way to connect to that source through which it came. That is the Kundalini. That is life force. We know it in our, in, in our wombs, we know it. We know it when we are in our mother's wombs. We know it when we are being saturated with her life force, arrows, right? That sexual energy that creates everything, which is everything. It's in everything. So we're going to do a practice with Kali and her capacity to really hold you, right? to really hold you in that radical discernment of what in this moment needs to die in you. Because it isn't true. It isn't original to you and it doesn't serve. It doesn't serve. It only serves an idea that isn't who you are, an idea of who you have to be or what you need to do. And none of that actually feels true. It doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel peaceful. It doesn't feel like bliss in your body to know that, oh, this is who I am. It feels like a burden. Oh, I have to do this and I have to be there and have to go over here and I have to behave and I have to become and I have to change this and I have to learn all of these things and I have to... You are whole right now. Working with the dark goddess specifically helps you remove the veil, right? Remove the constrictions, remove the lies, even if it's for one minute, but you will feel it. You will feel that freedom. You will feel that connection to your heart's truth. You will feel your authentic self. We say authentic a lot. What does that mean? That part of you that has no name, it has no age, it doesn't even have a gender. It's just life itself, living you, living through your body, moving through you, because all it wants is for you to experience your own divinity. Your divinity is that life force moving through you. What is divinity? Divinity is to know that you are human. And yet that in you, that in your heart, that knows that you are human, and that can feel your humanity with the whole spectrum of the emotions that you feel in your humanity and can hold that and can choose to transmute every part of you that feels like it is not whole, that feels suffering, that feels grief, that feels separation, that feels that it doesn't belong, that feels shame, that feels anger any part of you that we could call a shadow, right? The parts of you that you have rejected, that you have repressed, that you have judged. 
that you have tried to shut down because they, they're not acceptable and yet you feel them. So of course they drive you, right? The more you reject them, the more they will drive you. So the part of you that can see all of that and choose to transmute every single shadow, transmute, transmute, actually transform the energetic frequency of that in you that is causing you suffering into a desire for love. It's the core of any suffering. It's a desire for love that that part of you believes it doesn't have. The reason people do atrocious things in the world is because they feel that they don't have and don't deserve and can never get the love that they yearn so deeply for that it becomes pathological. So they try to find it and get it and consume it and rape it and control it and prevent anyone else from touching it. <sighs> they have never felt what that is. They have never known what that is, but they know they want it. That's the Philosopher's Stone. That's the Holy Grail. The fifth element, that's love. That's love. And that's why you want to be here. And that's why you're listening to me. And that's why we do the work that we do in the spiritual community. When we focus on healing from within, all it means is that you get to recognize and experience that you are whole. And it can only come through experience. It can only come through practice. It is not a thought that you repeat to yourself. It is a journey every single day. And the more you learn and the more you go deeper and deeper into your heart and you actually learn how to attune your physical instrument, your body to the frequency of that need, of that desire, of that yearning to experience love and you learn how to funnel through this energy that's rising in you that is the source of this need and the kundalini all it is it's life it's life and it's waking up to its own desire to live to express itself which means to love the only way you can truly express your essence is to express your love there has never been and never will be. And there isn't any being in the world that can love the way that you do. It's a whole concept of abundance. You understand your experience of love. It's not better than someone else's. It's not more. It's not less. It's you. It's just as worthy as anyone else's because that is the essence of love. And that's the source of any healing because in that experience of your essence, of your capacity to love, learning how to actually increase that capacity, how to make sure that your nervous system can actually accommodate that because most of us don't feel safe experiencing that. We never have, so why should we? <laughs> All we know is fear and shame and greed and repressed grief and anger and sudden outbursts of this grief and anger that we don't know what to do with, that we think we're crazy to even want to express. Whereas the truth is, all of you, all of you is absolutely sacred. Every part of you is sacred. And when you hold yourself in that, which knows you are sacred, when you hold yourself in that field of love that knows that every part of you deserves to be loved. And when you create within yourself the discipline, the devotion, the focus, right? This is the feminine and the masculine parts of you, the focus, the discipline, and the devotion. The masculine creates the focus and the structure, the commitment. And the feminine funnels through it with its devotion to serving love in every part of you. Every part of you starts expressing that. How can I serve love? How? Through my body, through the way that I look at myself, through the way that I eat, through the way that I feed my children, through the way that I look at my friend, at my partner, through the way that I choose to speak to somebody I might not like. 
It doesn't matter. My preferences, my ego, my ideas, my history, my projections, I know that isn't mine. It's in my life so that I can use everything in my life to increase my capacity to love better. So when I asked God to kill me, I asked him to kill that part of me. And I say him again, him, not man, him, but language, <laughs> him, the God head, that which witnesses me in my bed, sweaty and alone in the morning and being ah, so frustrated, so frustrated that I want love. And yet I'm choosing to do certain things. I'm choosing to consume certain things. I'm choosing to say certain things that are somehow distorting, holding back, filtering the truth of what I know I'm here for, of what I want to speak to, of what I know I want to devote myself to. So all of that has to go. And I know there's more and more to go. <laughs> but in that moment, I was called to release that part of me. So what happened? What happened is a few months later, I had given up my position, my job, the career that I thought I'd have in the coaching industry as a teacher, as a guide, as a coach, right? All of that. I lost, quote unquote, lost the community of people that I thought were going to be my soul family forever, which again, they are. You can't never lose what is true, right? But in that moment, my life had to release all these relationships. And I lost my source of income. Now I knew I was held. I had the trust. I had built up the capacity to actually know I was going to be okay. I knew I was provided for, and I knew that I had to show up and do the work that I had been ignoring which is to really go within me and look at the darkness, look at my darkness, look at my greed, look at my shame, look at my dis-ease right in the body, whatever it is that I didn't want to deal with. Look at my disharmony so that I can learn how I can feel my wholeness. And that's what I do now, every single day. That's what I do with the people that I coach and I teach. I co-create with you, the container in which you can experience your wholeness, which equals to you experiencing God, the divine, universal love within yourself. It sounds so grand and it can be grand in moments, but really it is very subtle. It's sexual and yet it's not sexy. It means you will doubt whether you're crazy or not every single day. It means that a lot of people will leave your life back to masks falling off, right? All of that. It means that you might give up things that you think you could never survive without so that you finally know that you don't have to survive anymore, that you get to thrive. And it is giving up those things that will create the space for you to actually experience what that feels like. You did not come here for crumbs. You came to feast on life. You are the source of that life. So what do you need to do? Who do you need to be? How, how do you need to, in this moment, look at yourself to see what part of you you are ready to sacrifice? You are ready. You are ready to ask the divine to come in and show you the truth. That's what it means to release what isn't true. It's to see what isn't true so that you can see what is. I had to release a lot of those untruths about me with gratitude, not with blame or shame or guilt, although I carry all of that. But I could see that it had to be the way it was and it had to happen the way that it did so that I can wake up that morning and say, kill me, I don't want to live this way. Have everything I thought I wanted. It looks great, but it's not true. It's holding down literally holding down the force that wants to come through my heart. And that's why I'm speaking to you right now. Here I am. Daily work, practice, failing every single day, getting up and becoming even stronger. Thank you for my failures. Thank you for my mistakes. Thank you for humbling me every single day. That's what I want to say to that which I call God, which is that frequency of truth, that's what I call God. It's not an entity, 
It's a frequency of experience. That is what I call God. And goddess, and in the tantric tradition, right, Shakti, is the expression of that power. She is that which creates and births and moves. Right? So working with archetypes, working with Kali as the divine feminine, so incredibly effective and helpful because we are now including our imagination, our bodies, our voices, the vessel, the instrument that I am and that you are so that we can really release, really transmute the energy within ourselves so that we can experience that which I'm talking about. And you can feel it in me. You can feel it in my transmission. You can absolutely receive it. And it is only in you and your body that that awakening that you're looking for, that true awakening, which can take years. That's what I'm learning. And that's good. That's okay. But in the process of that awakening, for you to actually feel empowered on purpose, in alignment with your heart's desire, following, right, that destiny, that dharma, knowing that your life has purpose, seeing that light at the end of the tunnel, and actually committing yourself to walking through the tunnel. The only way out is through. And this is the tunnel of rebirth and life. Life is moving you through it, not death, life. But you must keep dying to everything that you're not. So we're going to do a short practice with Kali and really letting your body experience this kundalini energy, right? This life force itself and what it's asking you to see, right? As that shadow part of you that you need to just trust. It is safe to release. It is safe to love, right? Love your shadow and ask it, ask it to leave your system transmute it, move it through. Everything is energy. And it starts with our intention. My intention and my intention for our work and my intention for my life is to every single moment keep moving towards the light. As I'm bringing in all the darkness that I hold so that I could have compassion for the darkness in the world and so that I can know that there is no light without the dark. And it's in the dark that I reveal more and more and more of my light. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the confidence I have in my gifts, right? In my intuition, my capacity to feel energy, my capacity to move it, my capacity to work through my own body with my own healing, my own awakening, my work in the world. I wouldn't have the capacity to trust that I'm doing it if it wasn't. for the complete surrender that I have had to experience. There was no choice to let grace move through me. And it came from my choice, my intention to say, I want to die to what isn't true so that I can live. So that is Kali. She will burn everything that doesn't serve you in this moment to know the truth of your heart. She will take everything away that isn't true. She will expose your heart. And she will be fierce in helping you discern what those sacred boundaries around you have to be so that you can grow your capacity to love yourself better and then start transmitting that power that Shakti, that love to the world and just watch your life, watch it happen, watch it explore, explore. Literally, your life will start exploring itself in front of you. All you will have to do is just focus on what you know your heart is calling you to and you will be given the invitation, you will be given the resources, you will be given the clarity that you need in that moment because you would have, have created the structure, the commitment, the focus, the discipline and the devotion to how you want to live. You, how do you want to live? You, I want to live Sasha Lipskaya. And we're gonna do a practice where you get to live you, feel your name, you want to live you. And that is Kali. She wants nothing but you an energetic frequency, right? She's an archetype. She's a structure of power inside of you. 
you can play her, right? You can play with her. You can learn from her. You can embody her. You can chant with her. You can move with her. You can draw her. You can vision her. But right now, we're going to use all of the faculties of your body. Movement and sound and visualization, right? And that capacity for you to actually feel in your physical body her presence. And the intention for this practice is show me what isn't true so that I can live to what is true. Show me what isn't true so that I can live to what is true. What I'm choosing right now, doing the work with you, what isn't true is that I am meant <sighs> I'm meant to be known. It isn't true. I don't need to be known. Nobody needs to know my name or follow me or like me. Being here right now, speaking into this moment with you, this is enough. I want to die to that part of you. <laughs> that part of you, Sasha, that thinks she needs to be known. I'm being very humble <laughs> and even that that idea that I, I'm humble, all of that. Ha! <sighs> That's not true. What is true is that I'm devoted to love right now. And I can feel my, oh, my voice is shifting, my body is shifting. This is Kali. She's cutting me off. She's cutting the cords of attachment to these ideas of what I need to be <laughs> as a spiritual leader, as a teacher, as a guide, as a coach. No. I just need to love better right now. And I know how to do it. So I invite you to make that sacred intention be honest. She will tell you what that is. You can't ignore it. You'll know the truth. Feel it. And we're going to feel this energy of the Kundalini rise through your spine, right? Rise from your root into your body and expand through you. We're going to take seven deep breaths, simple, short practice. Gonna breathe in through your nose and release through the mouth. <sighs> All right, deep release, make a sound. You're gonna move your body the whole time, right? Not static, you're moving. Ha, <sighs> like this. Ha, <sighs> and every breath in, you're feeling this fierce, divine, feminine, dark goddess. Feel her, feel what that means for you, that force. Kali, if you've ever seen her, she's, <laughs> she's blue in the face with that fierceness, right? Her tongue is sticking out. She's got daggers everywhere. She's got heads and limbs around her, around her, like her waist and her arms and her, why? They all represent what isn't true. Unconsciousness, right? Unconscious men and women, ideas, ideologies, structures, belief systems, religious traditions, spiritual traditions, quote unquote, right? Faux, faux spirituality, plastic spirituality, all of the things that you think you need to do in the whatever, in the world that aren't actually true. All the things you need to become that aren't true, that are distracting you from the truth. She wears the skulls of all of those ideas. She will stop at nothing to show you the truth of who you are. And once you see that, You would never have seen anything more beautiful and perfect and whole. Perfect in the definition of that word in this moment means whole, perfectly whole in you. Still with all the imperfections of being human because that's what makes you whole. You're here to be more human through experience, your own divinity. That's the work. We are here to be more human, to love each other as our human selves through our capacity to live our divinity through our humanity. That's what this is for, which is why the body is sacred and we use it, okay? So 70 breaths, <sighs> and you're going to inhale into your womb, move the breath into your heart and exhale through the heart. <sighs> you're inviting Kali in, <sighs> show me what isn't true, <sighs> and show me what is. <sighs> Show me what isn't true. Ha! Help me feel what is. Show me what isn't true. Ha! And let me know what is true. Who I really am. 
I will guide you through it. 70 breaths. Let your body move if you can, right? Let your body move. Engage your senses. Feel her. Imagine her dancing in front of you, moving through you, right? She's flying everywhere. She's a goddess. She can go anywhere. She can move through your body and suddenly she's in front of you. She's holding you. She's leading you. She's pushing you. She's challenging you, right? She's in front of you. She's holding a mirror to your face the whole time. And she is ruthless. She's fierce. She will not stop. She will not stop until you have exactly what you came here for, which is to feast on this life as the source of your love. To feast on this life as the source of your love. There can only be more. You will never run out. You are the source. That's it. That's all. And the answer is in your practice. So let's feel it. Seven deep breaths. So just feel, first of all, your body align. Open your womb space. Open your heart. If you're a man, your lower dantian. Right? Working with colleagues, not just for women. Opening your shh. Just this shield around your heart. Opening your heart. Exposing your heart. Lifting your sternum. Aligning that central column that space between your heart and your spine. And don't feel like you need to get it right. You can't do this wrong. She will come through and she will show you what you need to know. And if you want, you can come back to this practice and go deeper. So in this moment, your sacred intention and my sacred intention is to feel and see what is true and focus on that. And in that focus to release what isn't true to sacrifice what isn't true, to give up that which is blocking the truth of your heart. You don't need to do anything. Your intention is everything. Okay, so 70 breaths, inhaling through your gut womb area, your lower dantian. Feel right now that part of you, right? That part of you between your hips, below your navel. Shake your hips a little bit. Just feel that, oh, that energy. Oh, make a sound. Ah, good. Ah, shake a little bit. If you're sitting, straighten your spine. Open your shoulders. And now ah, lift your sternum even more. Open your heart. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest. Relax your neck. Maybe you want to massage your neck a little bit. <clears throat> Clear your throat. Relax your chin. Relax your jaw. Relax your forehead. Oh, feel your feet on the ground, firmly, firmly on the ground. You are rooted, you're present, and we're going to move, right? Like a tree, like a tree that moves in the wind, that lives in this world, and yet is connected to the source of life, is grounded in it, <sighs> is safe in it. Good. Seven deep breaths into your womb, gut area, moving the breath into your heart and exhaling through the heart. Ha! Ah, with a sound, inviting Kali in. Show me the truth of who I am. Ha! Ah, seven breaths. Are you ready? Move. One, two, three. Inhale. Show me the truth, Kali. Show me the truth. Ha! Ah, another deep breath. Into the womb. Moving into the heart. Show me who I really am. Exhaling with a sigh. Ha! Ah, bring the breath in again. Releasing the lies. Show me the truth, Kali. Show me who I am. Ha! Ah, releasing the breath. Expressing yourself in this moment. Open your heart. Revealing your truth. Another deep inhale into the womb. Reveal to me who I really am. Show me who I am. I want to see the truth. Express yourself. Release the breath through your heart. Ha! Ah, three more. Feel your body move. Another inhale. Undulate your spine. Bring it in. Show me the truth. Show me the truth. Show me who I am. I'm ready to see who I am. Ah, releasing the lies. Ah, releasing the shadows. Ah, releasing the fear and the shame and the anger. Ah, another deep breath into the womb. Show me the truth of my heart, Kali. Show me who I am. Ah, releasing everything that's blocking my heart. Ah, I can shake your body, shake your body. Ah, final deep breath and you're going to hold it in your heart. Inhale into your womb. 
bring it into your heart, hold, expand your heart, lift your sternum. Show me the truth, Kali, show me the truth of my heart, show me who I really am. Show me who I really am and free me of everything that I am not in this moment and forever. Ha! Ah, release the breath. Ah. Shake out your body, shake out your body, shake out your body. Ooh, good, good, good. Ah, shake out your body. Simple practice, seven breaths. But you see, the preparation is important. You have to feel your intention. You have to feel your body ready and open, open to receive and open to reveal and open to release. Ah. Feel your body now, feel your body. Ah. Integrate the practice. Move however you want to move. Stretch. Crack your back, your knuckles, your feet. Maybe you want to twist. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. This is your practice. This is your practice. And you can feel that kundalini energy, that life force. <sighs> Activating within you. Slowly but surely moving through every particle in your body, every piece of you right now is vibrating at that frequency of truth. I want truth. I am truth. I live for truth. That to me is being in service to the divine. That is serving God. I am truth. I live truth. I feel. I know truth. I'm here for truth. And it starts with me. It starts with you. I wouldn't speak to this if it wasn't the most important work you could do as a conscious woman or man. If you are on this path to really awaken to the truth. What a joy it is that we get to do this work together. <sighs> And in this moment, just feel your heart. Give a thank you to your heart. Bring one of your hands to your gut, your womb, your hara, your lower dantian, one of your hands on your heart. Just feel that I thank you. I thank you, my womb. I thank you, my gut. I thank you, my heart. My womb, heart, your womb, heart. I thank you. I thank you for letting me be a channel for truth, a channel for healing, a channel for grace. Ah, for that is what you are, and that is what I am, and in that we are always whole, and that, that is how we know we are one. My unique way of loving and your unique expression of your love, loving each other, that's what creates wholeness in the world, that's what creates sacred union in partnership, my unique frequency of love and your unique expression of that love. Seeing each other, resonating together, lifting each other higher, higher to experience even greater, 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 deeper, faster, larger, truer love that ever has been because you are here to do that. It is your job to do that. You get to do that. You get to bring this healing to the world. And it has never been because you have never been. Just like my medicine has never been here because I have it. And I'm here to devote my life to it. Because I want to. Because that's my destiny. And because that is what I will live for. And that's what I'll die for. <laughs> every single day. And I know you will too, for your truth, for your medicine, for your destiny. Feel that speak through me, feel that in you, that is, that is. <laughs> that is the divine, recognizing itself feeling itself, knowing itself through me and you in this moment. Amen.
Thank you. I love you. <sighs> Let me know what this brought up for you. Let me know how I can serve you. Show me who you are. For I, I want to love you whole as you are. So feel, feel the truth of who 